Right, so hello viewers and welcome to Victory at Sea. I'm your host, BBG Chu, and well, I guess I should say welcome back in the event that you've uh, checked out some of my preview videos in the past. So, anyhow, um, today we're starting off our Let's Play series, checking out one of the three campaigns presented within the game here. Um, unfortunately, still on the uh, the press preview version of the game here. So, um, as I've talked about a little bit in the past before, I mean, the campaign for the game plays out in this, uh, I wouldn't want to give you guys the wrong impression, but I mean, I guess you could sum it up as this sort of uh, a naval mountain blade game, if you will, there, in the sense that it's uh, it's all in real time. We've already checked out the tactical battles, where you can command your ships, brawl it out, using a mixture of, of course, submarines, uh, battleships, and carriers doing all the, uh, all the all the things alike there. And, well, what you do on the on the campaign screen is, of course, you, might, you manage your fleet, you uh, buy new ships, and you really just um, influence the war effort there. So, I I think we'll start off the campaign just as that. Uh, currently inside the press preview version of the game, the Pacific Theater campaign is the one that's, mo that's uh, most fleshed out. And with that said, I think we'll start that off and we'll just uh, get this thing rolling here. Now, I should uh, warn you guys, I mean, there's still a few things inside the uh, the press preview version of the game that are a little bit uh, work in progress. So for example, right here, we got a choice between Great Britain and the US. And I'm not really sure whether or not this is supposed to be Japan because I mean, there's a uh, there's seven different nations inside the game, and of course they all have their own fleshed out set of boats, and I'd, I'd imagine it being Pacific Theater, it should be, um, yeah, uh, you know, US versus Japan there, but anyhow, that is a very small thing, and we'll just begin after selecting that little captain's portrait, and we'll go from there. So, um, there will be a bit of a tutorial here talking to us about, uh, just in general, how to play the game, but we already know, don't we? So, uh, congratulations to us, we've been promoted to the rank of captain, we've been uh, given command of the USS uh, Asherwood, some sort of destroyer, and from the looks of it, it's time to take the fight to the enemy. So, uh, let's go. Uh, so, starting yes. off, the game will tell us uh, a, li a little bit about controlling the fleet on the campaign map here, with a lovely uh, little video, which we're going to skip. Um, the basics are fairly simple, and I apologize for the loud uh, droning sound there. It's, um, it's quite bothersome bothersome, but uh, the campaign plays out again. I mean, you, you, you can you can definitely see the, some of the similarities to, say, uh, th things like Mount and Blade Warband where it's, uh, it's a real-time we control our uh, little iconic fleet here, made up of one ship uh, currently, though. And it'll tell us a little bit about uh, what the level of our fleet is, and I believe that's just like some sort of um, experience modifier on your ships, and how many ships we have, along with a name. So, um, from the looks of it, the first order of business is to sink the uh, the Karai over here, the tutorial destroyer um, of the Imperial Japanese Navy, I guess, so we'll go full steam ahead with a little uh, speed bar here. And we'll speed up the game slightly, and once we get in range, that's the, the red little circle here, I believe we can click on the enemy's ship, that will start up one of these battle screens, and um, what we can do here is that, I mean, this being the uh, the overarching campaign, your ships will take damage as, uh, as they go through these battles, and those are, of course, persistent uh, little blows here and there. So, um, from the looks of it, we get to start off the campaign with a nice and easy uh, sink in already almost destroyed ship from the looks of it and we can also choose uh, which ships we want to send yeah, free here. So yeah, um, the game will I'd imagine go forwards with its tutorial going from here or perhaps not seeing as how I believe we've uh, already fired off a few of the battle ones um, coming from our uh, our previews, but just giving you guys a, uh, a brief refresher on some of the action taking present here on in the tactical battles. And I, I mean, as you can see, the transition between the campaign and the tactical battles are, for the most part, these uh, really seem um, seamless. Is what I what I think they call it streamlined. There's no loading screens. Is uh, anyhow the point that I'm getting to? So uh, we're going to get our ship here again using the ship throttle and the time controls to just make a, a bit of a steam boat uh, drive towards the enemy here, and talking a little bit about the HUD elements here, I mean the central portion of the uh, the dashboard here, we have our weapon controls, and from here we can take control of various different uh, weapons on our destroyer, so for example, we want to launch 
a few torpedoes here. I'm gonna put in down another gun barrage, and as you can see, the uh, the reload as the screen meter fills up. So that's that. Um, moving forwards down to the dashboard, we have a whole bunch of different subsystems present on the ship that we can either uh, that, that can be damaged and can be repaired over time, which will definitely affect how we play the game. And there's a few other bits and bobs that I guess we'll get to next time. Um, yeah, and the inside the campaign, as I've already said, I mean our fleet here, they, they it does uh, indeed level up and. Um, um, this will actually also grant us access to a few more uh, different ship types as well. Um, we can get some, yeah, some really uh, generic stats, I guess, about how many ships we've sunk, how many we've lost. But one of the important things is uh, how many war bonds that we uh, gain. Seeing as how, um, as we gain those war bonds, we can then buy uh, more and more ships for us to use there. So that's that. Um, moving forwards with the uh, campaign here, let's see what else we had to do. See, three enemy fleets off the, off of the Hawaiian Islands. So that from the looks of the game, just wants to give us a opportunity here to get in depth into uh, the game mechanics. So I guess we'll come over here and sink the uh, Ten Tenkazi over here. I guess. So, um, same general process. It'll be another one of these wounded uh, destroyers. So, from the looks of it, this will be yet another really straightforward, uh, straightforward battle here. I'm going over a few other uh, mechanics here. We have some indications about the health uh, values of our different ships. We can uh, we can actually get the ships to automate themselves if we uh, choose to. And with that said, there's um. There's actually a tactical view present for for your uh, different vessels, and once you get into um, some of the bigger fleets, this will be important, seeing as how you can issue uh, more specific commands to ships all at once. For example, engage ships or um, defend a location, move to a location, retreat. And I mean, as you can see here, the the ship AI is quite competent. It's already nicked down. Um, that ship down to the very last little bit of. Uh, it's whole strength there, and I think we'll try to finish this off with a nice torpedo. And we'll see where that goes. We'll make it a race, see whether or not the projectiles get to it first, and... Ooh, yikes! No, that did, uh... No, the torpedoes missed, but the last shot took it out. Right, so that'll be just another one of these, uh, nice little tutorial missions done. Let's see what this is all about. On behalf of the Admiralty, um, on behalf of the United States Navy, Captain, I am honored to award you with, uh, some sort of medal, so alright, that's that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right, I mean, over the course of the game you get some of these medals, I think they're more or less just the in-game form of achievements there. And, like I said, we've leveled up, so we gain uh, some, have some access to a few new ships, and from the looks of it, we gain access to a whole uh, line of different um, destroyers. So, I mean, there's uh, yeah, there's definitely quite a lot of uh, different ship classes inside the game. These uh, destroyers, I'd imagine, would vary quite a bit on, say, how much hit points they have, what type of weapon systems they have, and just in general, um, characteristics like that. But anyhow, we have a few more uh, ships to get through here, so I'll bump up the time. We'll approach yet another one of these fleets and hopefully get through these um, tiny missions here and get to the real uh, meat and bones of the game shortly. Ooh, this one actually looks like it's um, it's an escort mission. Right, so uh, one thing about the game is that, and again, this is something we've checked out inside the preview the videos already, but there are a wide variety of different missions. There, there will be a few of these convoy attack missions, and these are particularly neat. Um, if you have a few submarines around, there will be uh, some of these port attack and defend missions. There will also be a few blockade missions. I'm not really sure what blockade ones are about. And there are, of course, just uh, straight-up naval engagements as such, and during these battles, I think one of the things that's uh, occurring right now is uh, this battle, um, I want to say that it might be a night battle, seeing as how they can't really find the uh, the glare of the sun right now, or perhaps it's just a really cloudy day, but anyhow, um, the game does indeed do a, uh, a, a nice job doing um, both time and weather as well. Anyhow, let's just continue forwards here, so you have what we can do about throwing it out with some of these enemy ships. And, uh, let's see where we can go from there. Actually, you know what? I'll get the game to, uh, handle the battery of guns right now, because it's very difficult to see the ranges down onto these enemy ships in the current, uh, time. And, ooh, yikes, they've actually, uh managed to hit off a solid barrage onto uh, my ship over here. Let's see what we can do though. 
They're gonna fire off a nice torpedo barrage. Or no, that's his uh, single torpedo. I wanna see what we can do here about turning and avoiding that. And there we go, nice long wing maneuver. And in addition to uh, fast forward in the game, what I can do is of course slow down the game as well. And over here I'd like to take a really accurate shot, hopefully lead uh, a little bit on the target here, and score uh, a direct hit on some of his weapon systems. So we'll see, what the, we'll see where that goes, and hopefully it will hit right on the mark. So I'm going to bump up the time by a bit, and there we go, scored a direct hit, and unfortunately we didn't take out any subsystems though, so I had to wait for uh, volley number 2 to uh, see whether or not we can perhaps hit some of his weapons, taking them out of the fight, or some of his subsystems like these, which will either uh, help in taking or mitigating his weapons, or alternatively doing something to slow his ship down as well. That should be another nice shot right into the rear of the ship, though it didn't do too much damage. Hmm. So I guess the ships do have a bit more armor in select locations than, say, on other ones. That's one thing that I, I'm not terribly sure of inside the game right now. Um, anyhow, let's see what we can do about finishing off this guy. It'd be nice if they could um, have some sort of, like, night highlight for the ships, though. I think that would be really, really useful there. That should be another direct salvo into them. And there we go, ship crippled. So that destroyed a whole bunch of their different weapon systems. So they are pretty much rendered ineffective here. Now this might be a bit of a tricky shot. I'm going to try to launch the torpedoes at a uh, parallel target here. So that might be a tad on the difficult side, but luckily our destroyer launches two of these um, heavy, heavy, heavy damage, uh, heavily damaging torpedoes at once, and ooh, or no, perhaps it launches three of them as well. But anyhow, from the looks of that ship, uh, blew up at just after the torpedoes missed from, um, I guess the uh, the critical amount of damage we managed to put on it, utilizing some of the other things there. Um, so anyhow, moving forward so we can finish off this oil tanker. I believe, um, yeah, taking out some of these, say, uh, logistical ships is a, is, a, is a pretty big portion of the game. Like, for example, on the campaign map, each and every single one of the, uh, the dockyards inside the game will have their different um, supply levels listed and all and stuff like that. And another thing that you guys probably have, uh, have noticed by now is that on the campaign map we saw one boat there or one fleet there with like the harass order um, coming from the Japanese side and one of the patrol boats uh, coming from the, uh, the US Navy as well. So again, lots of uh, really neat stuff on the campaign map and uh, the integration between that layer and of course the tactical stuff as well. Right, so I think I'll try to get back in here to the oil tanker. I really want to fire off these torpedoes. Let's see whether, when they're going to be ready. Get a nice barrage off like that. And that should hit almost spot on. There we go, so that should finish up the mission nicely. I'll, however, at the expense of a slight amount of damage to our ship. That'll give us some more level up and some more juice on those regards. And I think we'll just... Um, make a run for this last ship and get on with it. I'll bring up the uh, the overarching map here if um, the a if the uh, if the tutorial allows me. Doesn't look like I can, so I think we'll just uh, go back to oh no, I can. Right, so anyhow, yeah, there's uh, there's quite a large campaign map here, and as you can see, there's a lot of different bases. Each and every single one of them will have their own supply level, and a I believe like either a certain amount of patrol boats that it that circles around it, or just as many uh, rather how many ships that you can pick up there, as well. So that's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, anyhow, I, I think I'll just risk it. I know we've taken a tad amount of damage right now. So, with that said, it might be a bit risky banking in here. But then again, these guys... Ooh, it'll be a submarine mission here. So I guess we do get to check out submarines early inside the game. This will be a care, uh, destroy or, yeah, destroyer versus submarine battle. So this shouldn't be too big of an issue. Destroyers are really, really useful in taking out these submarines. Because submarines are, uh, historically, actually pretty slow ships. Well, this, this, these destroyers are really light and uh, really fast ships carrying depth charges as well. So this will be also a nice opportunity to see how um, these depths, th these uh, these depth charges play out inside the campaign as well. Um, though I think we've already seen this inside the uh, one of one of the 
things that we've done before inside one of the preview videos. Anyhow, the general idea is that we want to close up on one of the submarines. Submarines will go underwater to avoid the big guns on some of uh, the, the cruisers and some of the ships, but I guess we could force this one down using our tiny gun on top of our destroyer. And once, once we close up on the ship, what we're going to do here is that we're going to then pummel it with depth charges. And these things are particularly brutal in Victory at Sea because they're, it's, it's li literally just a mass wave of these things. I'm going to use the pause function of the game pretty selectively here. They fired off a very close uh, arcing group of torpedoes. I really hope that we can avoid it. And we got lucky there. One of those hit us, but as you can see there, uh, the torpedoes do have a chance of uh, being duds, which will um, effectively hit your ship, but they won't explode. Uh, and I think it, um, you know, remembering from Silent Hunter, it might be uh, due to like the angle in which they hit or something along those lines, but anyhow, there's the, there's the chance of those things not actually exploding and uh, thus uh, saving us inside the campaign here. Right, so that is uh, effectively the tutorial, and let's see what Captain John L. McCree says uh, in return for finishing off all of those ships. Captain, I suggest you head down to some islands that I can't pronounce, along with uh, an atoll. Um, we need to take out Japanese supply convoys and capture the islands to begin our push west. So, um, I guess that is one of the overarching things that we can aim to do, and uh, in general go for those, but currently I think what we'll do here is that we'll put the ship into port in Pearl Harbor in uh, Pearl Harbor, and we'll see um, what we can do here, perhaps repair our ship, perhaps uh, buy some with the large amount of war bonds that we've uh, we've accumulated here. So we'll click yes to entering port, that'll bring us over here and that'll give us a few options to, for example, uh, visit the HQ, visit the shipyard, it looks like ship repairs are underway, so from so I'd imagine that um, some, of the, uh, some of the tasks there are automated, such as repair. And let's see what this is all about. So from the looks of it, at the uh, the headquarters here, we can accept a few missions from the uh, the AI, the, um, the the people over here. And yeah, from the looks of it, I mean, one ship, one of our ships is uh, under attack and requires assistance. So perhaps we will go and help them out. In the meantime, let's check out what we can do inside the uh, the shipyard over here. And I mean, like I said, we can buy a wide variety of different ships, and these will start to open up as the campaign goes on. And as you can see, there's a lot of them right now. Uh, we're a lot of them inside the game. It's just that we have unlocked only the up until this part right here. Um, so checking out uh, checking out our ships. Currently we have a Fletcher class destroyer. This thing's actually um, pretty valuable, being at five thousand war bonds. Where um, is that? Where never mind, not five thousand, but five million war bonds. And it uh, well, first and foremost, the game gives us uh, the stats about how much hit points and how much armor the ship has, along with its uh, speed and all that. And uh, namely, the the main thing that I want to check here is the, uh, the different weapon systems present on the ship. So, for example, some of these will be um, slightly different here and there. Mostly, uh, the ships inside the same ki uh, classes tend to have a, um, a specific purpose and thus a select uh, set of different weapons to um, really just take uh, to go from there. Um, so for example on our ship we have one secondary turret that's the that's effectively the main gun on our ship despite being the secondary type of thing though we carry a whole heck load of uh, uh, anti-submarine depth charges and a whole bunch of torpedoes on both sides we actually fire off five at a time so that's um, yeah that's definitely something um, taking a look at some of the other ships available right now our ship is uh, it's actually currently the fastest one out of these um, other ones and it has uh, definitely a very comparable amount of armor as well. But what we can do here is perhaps um, going off for a war bonds amount here. I'd like to pick up an anti, uh, more so of an anti ship type of other things. So I'm looking around over here and checking for uh, something else here. A lot of these other classes of destroyers don't, uh, we're actually, yeah, it doesn't seem like any other destroyers have a, uh, a major turret on it. So I think we'll just pick up another Fletcher class destroyer. That'll add another one over here. That'll add the, uh, the Ross. And well, we can of course sell it as well, but don't believe we'll uh, do that. We can just uh, leave port really and uh, go from there. Currently though, I think what we'll do here is that we'll save the game and we'll save it as that and really um, go forwards. So hit that back button, leave port, and let's we'll see what we can do.
in order to take... Hmm. Oh, um, that's right, we were supposed to go and assist Burns over here, which I'd assume is that ship that is, uh away or being attacked, so I think we'll just do that. Currently I'm receiving some sort of phone call, and I'm not really sure who it's from, so... Um, but anyhow, that's that's something else. And oh, over there you can see a tiny little, uh, yeah, convoy fleet, supply ships, a whole bunch of oil tankers and stuff like that. So yeah, um, a lot of neat uh, fleets that are just passively roaming around here, and of course, if we were playing as Japanese, we could uh, possibly take that thing out. And would you look at that, it's um, some one-on-one -on -one going on over here. Um, from the looks of it, our little harassing boat was launched from Pearl Harbor, the other one was launched from Wake Island. Well, let's turn this into a bit of a bigger battle and join in on the fun here. So we'll see what we can do. Right, so we'll get our ships to go into. Let's see, it tell us a bit more about um, taking control of ships. And this is where we get to um, take a bit more uh, use of the the um the fleet tactical view here because we're command we're commanding multiple ships we can issue them say movement orders to different locations and in general it helps out um immensely in uh micromanaging our ships like that currently though i'd like to uh view the burns over here duke it out with the uh natsushigo ship so both of these are destroyers, again, these are more or less um, ships who are really good ships for patrol purposes and anti-submarine purposes. And of course they are they make uh, excellent um, convoy guards as well. So yeah, that's that. And our buddy over here, the USS Burns, might just be able to win this uh, engagement on its own here from the looks of it. That torpedo <laughs> it's all gonna be duds, so I guess the uh, the game does indeed want us to come in here and to, uh, to save the day. So we'll see what we can do about that, but um, yeah, the Burns here seems to be holding on its own, to say the least. Uh, once we enclose here, I think we'll get up in personal and uh, lay down some very heavy barrages, and that'll be that, I guess, for this mission. Right, so we'll enclose here at time 6 speed. Currently, we should be fairly close by to their, uh, yeah, we, should, we are actually really close by over here. I think I'll get Captain Davis's uh, ship on the ice shore and over here to do its own thing, and we'll just take control of the Ross for now, being the closer uh, ship out of the two. And is that going to be another dead barrage? No, that barrage is actually going to pass right through them. A few more hits. That should be a torpedo barrage that hits. No? Where are ya? Hmm. So that is another easy victory and that'll finish off um, this fight right here. And yeah, both of our ships are leveling up. We managed to get to level 2 here, so that is that. And the ships of course carry their, uh, their levels independently. It doesn't look like we unlocked any ships on that route though. Um, so moving forwards, let's see what we can do about uh, moving perhaps a little bit closer to some of the uh, the lands the Japanese have and see what we can do about, th about that. Because I recall, yeah, we were supposed to head down to one of these uh, atoll locations and to check out some of the targets uh, around there, so let's see. Oh, perhaps the uh, the Japanese just absolutely aren't available for planes at the Pacific Campaign. I mean, as you can see, um, the British are, or, you know, the um, British, Australian, and New Zealand peoples are also summed up over here as, a, as an independent faction, so that's that. Now, um, I think we were just supposed to harass ships inside this uh, general area to the front of our ship, so, so I guess we'll just do, uh, do that and see how well that goes. Might be able to um, even we might yeah we might actually be able to take uh, take the fight to one of the enemy ports in a port attack mission later on. But for now, I think we'll just see what uh, what we can do from here. Oh, and that's right. Um, when ships have 
more were, were yeah when they when the ships have more strength than you they'll have these little uh, plus markers or alternatively if they're weaker than you they will have these uh, little um, negative sign markers there so that's um, that's one way to figure out which ships are say more powerful than your own and just uh, things like that I'm gonna I'm gonna move really close in here to uh, this fleet right here it uh, it features a cruiser which is a pretty powerful ship relative to what we have but I think with um, with some good micromanagement we should be able to take these guys on properly yeah so right now we can see the Yura cruiser and uh, Hatazuke destroyer over here um, as you can see the destroyers are very comparable but the cruiser has roughly six times the amount of firepower up present on our ship which is to say the least a lot um, this is um, apparently a, a blockade mission, so yeah, inside these missions we can alternatively escape to win these, so that's that. Though it should usually tell us which um, direction we should move to. It's probably going to be behind these ships, and yes it is. Yeah, sometimes these uh, these arrow markers are a tad uh, difficult to see. So, um, what I think we'll do here is I will issue uh, just general orders to our ships. Let this go forwards and see what we can do about um, either brawling it out with this cruiser or alternatively just avoiding them. If we can get close enough, we can use some of the, uh, the destroyer's strengths here, namely its uh, huge barrage of side tor uh, torpedoes to do some massive damage, and uh, that'll be that. just that, I guess. Now, hopefully, the uh, the USS McLean over there, the, the Clemson class destroyer, will soak up some of the damage. That would be really, really nice. Now, that ship should have, yeah, three port and, um, I forgot what the other side of the ship is called, uh, guns. So, we'll see what we can do about, uh, perhaps, evading them or using the other ship as a bit of a, a cannon sponge, if you will, to close up there. Let's see what we can do. So first and foremost, I want to I want to pick off this this destroyer to uh, to start things off. I'm gonna bank just in range of it. I'm gonna slow the game down to uh, only half time uh, half times real speed, real time, and I think I'll do free view so then we can get much better control of the cannons. Point my ship directly ahead. Hope for the uh, yep, they're gonna miss. So that's good. And from the looks of it, we, we kind of scored a hit. I think we, yeah, we took out a tiny amount of damage onto them, but not too much. I'm gonna put our ship in, yeah, a decent intercept route like that. Bump up to the tactical view, check up on our other ship. That one's fine. So we'll continue. Wait until our ship guns are loaded. Fire off another barrage there. That is just gonna scamper by, so that's good. And let's see. I'm waiting until I can get uh, decently close to that other to that other ship, so that I can unleash the uh, the torpedoes on it in a range in which, if it turns, it won't be able to uh, outturn the torpedoes. And I think we'll fire them off like that. That's going to be a volley of five, so that has uh, I'd say a decent chance of hitting. We are well, we've got lucky th three times in a row, so that's good. We're gonna fire off another shot there. Let's see what we're doing over here, so I can get the USS Fletcher to close in. Um, check out what is happening over here. I'm gonna pause the game. It's very hard to jump around with the camera not being on the follow ship mode. But uh, yikes, that is gonna be the end of our buddy buddy ship here. Where? No, no, three duds. Yeah, so odd. Ro yeah, so there's uh, yeah, there's a few odd ro rolls with the torpedoes inside the campaign, but that's um, that's a very small issue there. We got, uh, or alternatively, I guess we got really really lucky there. And going off of there, I'm I'm not really sure if the torpedoes are actually rolled as like a group. So for example, if one of them are, or if one of them will be a dud, all of them will be a dud. Or alternatively, if they're uh, decided like as a as a pack type of thing. But I think it's more or less just so you you can keep the AI ships duking it out long enough so that the player can um, go in and to of course uh, influence them or just you know finish them off really going from there. And this, yeah, this destroyer is practically dead. It lost, I think, three of its weapon systems, so at the very most it'll have one, basing uh, that off of our ships. And we'll see what we can do. Um, I'll see what I can do about uh, 
about changing up the brightness as well. I noticed that we're either playing a lot of these uh, night missions, or alternatively, it uh, we're just playing a whole bunch of missions on the uh, the really dark settings there. So yeah, that is uh, yet another thing. Right, and now I think it's uh, time we can just issue some overarching orders. You know what, I'll just issue both of my ship's attack orders for now. Let them close up. Um, ooh, they, uh, they actually got quite a nice blow onto our destroyer here. And that torpedo, ooh, is gonna miss. So, that'll be that. And let's see, once we close in here, it's, so long as we get one really good uh, torpedo volley on that cruiser, I think we'll have a solid chance in uh, blowing it out of the uh, the water there. And our other ship ran away from the looks of it. It's kind of weird, but alright. I think it went off of the, the, the bolded, uh, I don't know, sky blue colored line here. So it might just come back after some time. Um, but we can, we can manage with one ship. Oh, I see, it retreated. So full steam ahead. We should be able to catch up with that uh, carrier soon, or a cruiser soon enough. And oh, it's gonna come back and uh, unleash the beast at us this time. So I don't know what we'll do about that. We'll try to put in our own volley here. They're gonna launch torpedoes. We are gonna go into dodge. Yeah, and those torpedoes are definitely gonna miss. We're gonna try to close in here. I think I'll try to get in another uh, volley of guns and I think I'll bring the ship around so that we can fire off our torpedoes as well. Now, they have a lot of guns there, so I really hope that this barrage just barely nicks our ship and indeed it does. Also hit the heavily armored portions, uh, so that didn't do too much, lucky for us. And over here, I think it's time for the torpedoes, so we'll swing our ship around. And now that is just going to be at the very edge of the uh, the firing zone here. And yeah, those torpedoes will have a long reload time. But the good thing about our destroyers is that they go very, very fast. So with that said, we might be able to do, uh, get the hell out of the dodge here. If, um, if we don't take any damage, say, on our engines on this run. And there we go. Solid hit. Took out all the weapons, crippled that ship, and it is now a lovely piece of sea wreckage. So, um, I think that'll be that for the first portion. That was <laughs> actually quite a, quite a risky uh, battle there. It might have been a, quite a short uh, let's play as well if that went the wrong way. But um, anyhow, we managed to finish those guys off. Unlocked a submarine and another destroyer class. Uh, moving up to level 3, I believe. And that'll be that. And oh, what is this? Salvage parts recovered from the enemy wreck as well. So, um, I think this will be a nice cliffhanger. Find out uh, next time what the salvage parts were when we return with Victory at Sea. And be sure to like and subscribe in the meantime for those automatic video notifications. Bye for now.